Hey there everyone, Mazarok here, and today I want to talk about dungeon utility and what different class and specs can bring to the table, because I feel a lot of the time, especially when we're in Pugfinder groups or things like that, a lot of people focus on meta specs. Oh, let's bring, let's bring X spec because it does a ton of damage and they don't think about a lot of different things or think creatively about what is needed for the particular dungeon, what can do, uh, you know, who can do what. And honestly, I feel sometimes it, it falls into a lack of creativity and can actually cost you the run because, you know, maybe on a raging week you forgot to bring a sooth. Maybe in a plague fall you just literally did not have a single class that could, you know, stun the big slime or CC the big slime at all because you didn't think about it and you just took some meta specs. Right now, one of the meta specs is Warlock, so yes, you do have the means to do so. But I want to shine light on different abilities and different ways that you can use specs creatively to have success in Mythic Plus. I feel that needs to be talked about a little bit more. Before we get started, like, comment, subscribe. I cannot do it without people like you. Uh, the amount of growth on this channel has been absolutely crazy, and I have to thank every single one of you for the support. Uh, just absolutely thank you. Uh, let's keep this going. My guild Bloodstorm is actively seeking DPS. Uh, we're recruiting DPS players. Uh, of course, we are a social guild as well. If you just want to come by, hang out. Be a casual player. Come on by. If you have any questions, hit me up in the Discord link down below for Bloodstorm. There's also the website link down below for that for the for the guild. Uh, their Bloodstorm Guild Discord link is also the community link. So if you just want to come by, hang out, have fun, click that, go at it. And of course, there's the Twitch link down below. Uh, if you want to watch people stream, I stream. Ha, ah, done. All right. So one of the first things that I think people tend to forget, especially that is especially important in Shadowlands, is suits. Druids, hunters, and rogues. Now, rogues is a little bit tough because it's on a longer cooldown, cooldown but druids and hunters are both on 10-second CDs with Trank Shot and Soothe uh, being one of their main abilities, or, like, one of their main, like, CC type abilities or uncc I guess uh, it's weird uh, debuff purge type of deal very very strong uh, especially in dungeons like the other side theater of pain when you get to a high enough key level without a soothe in some of these dungeons things really start to hurt and start to become a lot less possible because the enrage buff on these mobs becomes a crazy ton to overcome so if you're thinking about some of these dungeons at a higher level and you're wondering why things are hitting so hard maybe it's because you need soothe in your party number two i wrote this down almost every class except for five healers have an interrupt yeah interrupts i can't believe i'm having to mention that in dungeon utility but i've run enough keys while leveling up my vengeance demon hunter in the last little while especially low end keys DPS, you, use your interrupt, man. Use your interrupt. You do more damage when you're alive. Use your interrupt. Thank you. Oh, slows roots. Now, this falls under the purview of entangling roots, binding shot, disable, hamstring, flying serpent kick, piercing howl for warriors. I can go on. There are a lot of specs that have slows shamans with the the totem and i feel like they're unutilized man i'm telling you when i have when i'm in a position as a tank where i have to kite and i immediately notice that hey these the mobs are now moving 70 to 90 percent slower and basically a snail pace i know some dps has used their utility to help me kite and i'm telling you like a druid that drops Ursolve's Vortex the moment he sees his kite book it is always welcome in every single one of my parties that I run M plus in. I love it to death because you're just saving the tank. And if you're saving the tank, you get to do more DPS because the tank is alive and has aggro. It's wild. Absolutely crazy. There might be a little bit of sass in this video. Just a little bit. But utilize those slows. Utilize the roots when you can. Um, the roots being a little bit less useful uh, when non-kiting or just from just unless you're actively trying to keep something away 
like you know you're trying to separate uh, an inspired mom you root it you get the others but the slows especially when you see the kite book it if you're a warrior hit piercing hell they'll love you for it absolutely they'll love you for it so don't be afraid to use those fears and movement abilities now this is this is a wide variety so this is psychic scream for priests this is fear for warlock this is typhoon for druids which is a movement based ability marksmanship hunters have the uh the blunderbust boom shot the four frontal like typhoon that pushes things away this is a really really good on sanguine weeks this is really good for like the mist color on uh in mist of tyranny scythe just trying to get them away like hey boom get away a well-placed Typhoon or Boom Shot, Burst Shot, I'm not sure exactly what it is for Marksmanship Hunter, can allow maybe your Warlock to get the Fear Cast in time. There's Mortal Coil for Warlocks as well. There's a lot of different abilities that move under this purview. But when you're, Ring of Peace, when you're trying to place mobs in certain places to make the dungeon go easier, those types of abil abilities really do become invaluable. When I'm trying to... Uh, when I'm in Theater of Pain doing Gore Chop ring, Wing, I really like bringing a monk or being on my monk to Ring of Peace where I don't want the Jumpy Boys to go, where some of the range might not be stacking or things like that. So then that way I can keep things all grouped up and things die quicker. Just from a simple Ring of Peace. Typhoon can do this as well, or Cells Vortex, things like that. But those sort of movement displacement abilities can work very very well and also when planned if no one has a kick or an interrupt for something that's coming up you can fear it it might instantly get broken but you've interrupted what's going on maybe allow it they might start recasting it but they also might that also might have bought you time for an actual interrupt to come off cooldown you know an avenger shield uh, proc could have come up and you can actually kick it using these sorts of abilities intelligently can be very very strong so something you know that you can bring stuns almost every class has a stun almost every class can spec into a stun something hard some sort of cc um man dps you should really be using them and if you're in an organized group start a stun rotation you know, you can start an AoE stun rotation or a single target stun rotation. But if you're ever wondering why the MDI can pull off these like massive stupid pulls that are absolutely crazy and you're like, and you tr and replicate something half as much in your live key and you're like, I don't know why this doesn't work. It's because these guys practice a stun rotation. Like every single little cast is timed perfectly so almost nothing gets to live long enough to be able to cast anything dangerous the shadow the warlock shadow furies the the totems for the shaman the stun totems for the shamans all of these things are perfectly placed within a rotation that nothing can really get off to put anybody in any trouble so if you're in an organized group, try starting a stun rotation. That can be very, very good. But if you're in a pug, man, you should absolutely be using your sun stuns a lot more. Stealths. Now, of course, stealths immediately comes rogue with uh, with shroud. You can sap. But uh, there's also the priest mind suit. There's a lot of dungeons in Shadowlands right now where the priest mind suit can actually just replace a rogue <laughs> you can just walk by uh theater of pain if you want to if you want to walk by the uh the first mob in the pack because it's a very popular skit now you quite literally only need to uh mind soothe it now you do have to watch yourself because you have to be on the very edge of the thing that you mind soothe on the left and you have to hug that wall but you don't have to you know you don't have to you don't have to invis sorry so very, very useful there. Sanguine Depths, uh, it really helps with the soothe on the bridge. Uh, Necrotic Wake, the mini boss, Nerzul or Nerz Nerzala, whatever his name is. You know the one, the one everybody in Viz skips. If you have a priest, you can just mind soothe it and walk right past. And you don't even have to worry about anything. There's a lot of instances like that where it, it becomes very, very useful. Other th things that fall in this category is Demon Hunter in Prison. Very solid for skipping and things like that. Very solid CC. Also very good for sequestering away a, um, for sequestering away inspired mobs. So if that's something that you need to do, 
very very good there very solid uh good cc to keep in mind for things like that next let's talk dispels now yes every healer has a dispel no questions every healer has a dispel but all of those healing specs when put into dps also have some sort of dispel it's just not magic let's say a paladin a holy paladin will have magic poison and disease i'm pretty sure that's what it is as a holy paladin they become a red paladin for a dungeon you still have a poison and dis disease dispel not magic for the general all this all-purpose healer dispel but you still have poison and disease use it so many times i look at the logs of who dispelled what in a dungeon and a, a windwalker monk never used their dispel once like ever and they're like well why am i taking so much damage and i'm dying because you're not helping yourself live <laughs> You can help your tank live by dispelling them as well. You can help your healer live by dispelling them as well. And, and I'm not throwing this just at monks. Every class can do this. Priest with mass dispel. There's some dungeons where mass dispel is absolutely incredibly useful, including bursting weeks where you see a shadow priest never cast mass dispel once and they're like, man, we're taking so much bursting damage. Yeah, there's literally something you can do about that. Like, quite literally, there's something that we can do, that you specifically can do about that to stop that from happening. Wild. It's absolutely crazy, right? So, use your dispels. Do not be afraid to, to, to use them as well. Help out your tank. Help out your healer. Because the more they get to live and the easier time that they have to live, the more damage you get to do as a DPS. Because they're not dying, you're not dying. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> Um, immunities, very, very useful as well. So if there's something that you just want to, that you need help with, Hunter, Turtle, Paladin, and Bubble, there's a lot of different immunities. Ice Block for Mage, uh, that you can use to get, to help you get through, or in a pinch, if you need to get through certain mechanics. Uh, Rogue Cloak is another one. Uh, I'm thinking if you're in a high enough key on Aspires of Ascension, the third boss, or Riffrian, if you have to deal with the, his recharge phase, and you might be a little bit squishy as a tank, or... You just don't have the defensive lined up. You've screwed up. But you got a rogue in your party. He can, you know, cloak of shadows and grab up all the balls while you stay in DPS. And that, yeah, it might suck for his overall, but guess what? If, if Getting the key done is more important than high, having a higher overall, in my opinion. But that's just me. So using those abilities on the fly, I wouldn't really take anyone for a dispel. Uh, for a dispel, for an immunity, but... It is something to think about when you do grab them. Like, oh, hey, they do have an immunity for this. I do... I know I just talked about immunities. I want to go back to dispels very quickly. Because one thing I didn't talk about was the importance of decursing. Shamans and mages are two very good classes that can decurse. That should absolutely be doing so a lot more. I don't know how many runs I've gone through where a mage has, like, zero decurses. Especially in, like, a Halls of Atonement. Man, being able to move out of the way and decursing... Uh, on the second boss, Eichelon, Echelon, whatever it is. Super huge. Theater of Pain, Decursing in the Lichwing. All of these things help so much. So just something that I wanted to touch base and bring up really, really quickly. So after that, we get into some weirder stuff, a little bit more niche. Uh, Warlocks, for example. They bring cookies. They bring demon gates. Now, this is something that last season and the season before is something that i'd be touching on for you know things that a utility that a warlock could bring but now that they're meta it's kind of like okay <laughs> yay cookies and demon gates uh but for the first two seasons trust me they're very much not the meta and being a warlock and trying to find a group was not easy <laughs> at all uh mind controls a priest and death knight if you're looking to run Theater of Pain, Necrotic Wake, the the strategy in the MDI in there, now this is something that I've been doing on my Death Knight for a very long time in Theater of Pain, is the Ancient Captain pull in Theater of Pain. You just control undead. Boom, you have a 2% damage aura increase and a 2% and 2 decrease in damage taken. You just keep them. You have to pull around and make sure that you have your count or you have to kill him at the end of the dungeon, but it is a very easy way to deal with that pack. Uh, the mind control, uh, the mind control in the MDI, what they do there with the flesh crafter and all that fun stuff. And uh, priests also bring shackle. Uh, let's talk about priest utility because they've got a lot. Leap of faith, 
great utility when used properly. It can also be used uh, to great trolling effect. Uh, Shackle is very, very useful in, against Undead in like Necrotic Wake. If you've uh, missed uh, an add on a Mart, you can just Shackle it very, very quickly. These are things that can also be dealt with with like Frost Trap by Hunters and things like that. I think at this point I've managed to talk about every spec a little bit because every spec has some sort of utility that they can bring to the party. Um, I've talked about skipped enablers. Party CDs. Now this is something that uh, this doesn't get talked about very much because you don't really bring it, but it's something to think about. Uh, for example, Death Knights with uh, AMZ. Very, very useful party utility against magic damage. Warriors with uh, their the battle... The, not battle shout, but rallying cry, um, and things like that. Uh, free shadow priest with vamp aura, vampiric aura, can absolutely help your healer through several problem packs when they actually hit the button. If you're wondering why you've ever had a pull that went super smooth in a high key with a shadow priest, and then you went right back and did it afterwards without a shadow priest. Go look at the healing meters, because there might be a chance that Vampiric Aura did a lot of healing to help off-heal the, uh, with, uh, off -heal with the healer and help you get through that pack. It's the same idea with, like, Druid, with, uh, the Heart of the Wild. So if you have a Boomy that's going Rest of Affinity, Heart of the Wild, they can help off-heal during really tough scenarios and things like that. That type of off-healing, uh, with, a, like, a Rep Paladin, Monk can do it a little bit, but it's not that great. Shamans can do it with it, uh, just putting in a couple of healing surges. That sort of utility is pretty great. I know I just said I want to talk about priests, but I'm talking about other things. It's just kind of how it works. But uh, I do want to say priests bring a lot of weird little niche utility. Healing priests bring shining force. Uh, really, really good for sanguine weeks. Push, uh, good pushback, knockback, and things like that. Lastly, a super niche scenarios, which is plague fall, where this is really only useful in. But we got to talk about it because some people don't know this is the big slimes and the purple slimes on the second boss so big slime first boss the purple slimes on the second boss can be banished by warlocks but can also be turned uh turn evil by paladin so this is one where paladins might want to think about actually taking the turn evil conduit for this dungeon it is very very useful in this niche scenario i wouldn't take it for any other dungeon but this one it because the conduit actually increases the yard of the cast by ten, uh, 10 yards and uh, makes it cast almost instant. It's not quite instant, there is a cast time, but it's so fast that it, there might as well not be one. And this can actually just send, send the slime off into Narnia, and you are fine, good to go, and you can just deal with it. Uh, this scenario on the second boss requires people to watch their AoE including yourself as a tank to make sure that you're not dotting it or anything because fears can be broken simply by uh damage but the warlock banish does not so if you banish the second slime you can try and damage it it's like the druid cyclone uh, although it lasts for 30 seconds it just has a much smaller range on things that it can be cast on so something to think about especially if you're a prop pally and you're having trouble with the first or second boss in plaguefall Try the turn evil conduit and have it ready. You would be surprised how effective it can be in those scenarios. But the point of this video was to get you to think about other classes and specs and what they can bring. What weird niche utility that these things that these classes and specs can bring that you might actually want to think about, right? You might want to bring the uh, bring a uh, um, uh, monk for a ring of peace and uh, weird little things like that, as well as the dispel that they offer. Now you might be like, oh wait, a mage has a curse and the curse keeps killing us, a decurse, and, and the curse keeps killing us in Halls of Atonement or Theater Pain or whatever. So you might start thinking about these classes differently instead of just bringing the meta, and you know what I mean, of what's around. Something to think about, what are some weird niche combos? What does your spec bring that no one else does? I'm pretty sure I talked about every class and spec, but man, there is so much to know in this game where the, I love running with M plus all of the time with people that are like, hey man, I can just do this. And I'm like, man, I never even thought about this that way. Let me know down in the comment section down below. And you know, next time you're pugging a key, think creatively. You know, you see someone with, uh, you see someone that looks interesting and you'd be like, oh man, 
that person's got a fun name. They could be good in this dungeon. And you'd be like, oh, wait, they bring this. Let's totally take them. Instead of just being like, I want the meta. I want the high IO. I want this. And just kind of run with something different. You know, because you'd be surprised what can be accomplished. Aside from that, I hope you guys are enjoying 9.2 as much as I am. I hope you guys are excited for 9.2.5 as much as I am. Have yourselves a good day and happy running.